Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, we've got a great, great guest today. Michelle Fabrica, you all, all know her as our love and relationship coach. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good, Art. I'm good, John. How are you doing? Good. Michelle, it's great to see you again. I have a, I, I don't know what it's called, a, a famous quote or a, it's a, a slogan or a saying, and it is that uh, uh, women give sex to get love, and men give love to get sex. And I, I, I love it because it really talks about the different libidos that it, almost everybody, all men versus all women, have. You know, there's that, it's, a, it's a truism, I guess. It doesn't hold true in every case. But the, the difference between libidos, between partners, is really important. And it's, it's hard to discover until you have enough time together as a as a couple uh, but it it if those two libidos don't match what do you do great question that's what we're going to talk about today yeah um i mean i i heard your truism and I'm, I'm not so sure i think that it really changes over time in a course of a person's life and of course you know we have same sex uh couples as well you know navigating this so it, it basically that can be true, you know, male men versus women around that. But I think it's it's it doesn't always hold true in the actual specific case of a relationship. So, yeah, obviously it's a very common and normal you know thing for people to have an imbalance, and it's going to change over time, right? If you're really stressed at work, you might have less interest. Maybe when your kids were younger, you know, you didn't have as much interest, and in, you know what's going on health wise in your body. So it's it's totally normal, and it's very common. And so there's no bad guys here. There's no problem per se, or one person, you know, ideally we take the blame out, right? And um, take the judgment out of what's going on. So we can, you know, kind of look together. So a couple can look at it together, right? Well, thanks, That's for, a good th point. Th thanks for bailing uh, John out of his truism. Uh, that, was, <laughs> <laughs> that was very kind of you. So, um, uh, what would be your general approach? Uh, since uh, whether you're a, a new couple or your uh, uh, your libidos are changing over time, uh, how would uh, uh, you suggest that people approach uh, discussing this? Because it's probably something that's not very often discussed. Yeah, well, I, I, w I hope it's discussed more and more. I want that to be something that a couple feels comfortable bringing up. And sometimes it's awkward, obviously. I mean, Maybe people are feeling hurt that, oh, wow, my partner doesn't want to be with me. Am I not attractive anymore? Or my body doesn't respond and I'm embarrassed, so I don't want to, you know, I'm not getting an erection anymore. Whatever it is. So, you know, bodies change, things happen. And so it's about, like, what would we like to be enjoying as a couple and how can we make that happen is what it comes down to. So it's, you know, sometimes it's going to be, oh, it's always one person who's more interested than the other and and that's fine, but sometimes it's going to be changing. So to kind of just roll with it because you never know where which way it's going to go. And so it's really about looking at what has worked well in the past, partly. And, you know, obviously if it's the way distant past, then maybe you're the kind of things you want to be doing sexually or physically with each other has changed. But finding starting with those and even knowing your body better at this place in life. We touch on that in other videos, I know, but Basically, what do you, what does your body enjoy? How might you explore your own self, some solo sex, some pleasuring and see what it is that you would like so that you can share that with your partner and you can both kind of get on board with, get current, you know, with what's happening now in your bodies and what you would like to be enjoying. So the communication is really important. Yeah, communication and, and, and transparency and honesty, you know, gee, I feel embarrassed because, you know, my body doesn't respond like it used to. So I've been kind of avoiding having sex with you. And it's like, there's so much more, you know, you don't need an erection to have sex. I mean, it's, there's, we don't need even our bodies to get aroused to have sex. We can just choose to be close, to be touching each other. It can be, there's a lot of things to do with our bodies that doesn't involve penetration. So it's kind of like, let's think outside the box of what would be pleasurable and how we might want to do that together. 
So would you and, suggest? And does, would you suggest that uh, uh, a lot of couples you hear have a a date night? They force having a date night, uh, maybe having a uh, once a month having a libido conversation. Uh, uh, date. Oh, that'd be awesome! I love it. Yes, absolutely. And I think the date night can be something you know uh, where you you know really plan to. That's my suggestion: get naked, get in bed together. Have some time, whether you're cuddling, whether you're touching each other, just holding each other, whether you're talking, whether you're in silence, and um, enjoy that. And maybe maybe you start stroking each other, or you don't, but just to have time to be together in that way. And I think, I mean, you know, we spend time, you know, petting our dogs and cuddling with our, you know, have our cats on our lap, and like, let's do that with each other, right? I mean, we humans enjoy touch all our lives that way. And so kind of like widen the, the possibilities of what, because we always think of, you know, sometimes we think of sex as just, you know, penis and vagina for, a, you know, a straight couple. And so there's much more to be enjoyed here. Well, well, I'm gobsmacked. You are gobsmacked. <laughs> we are gobsmacked. Normally we, gobsmacked. we can come in and we can just keep this thing going, but, you know, uh, you had us at libido. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, good, you know what I, uh, Michelle, what I appreciate is I think that you have some good practical solutions there because uh, sex, libido is such a personal thing for everybody. Um, and that's why it's hard to talk about. That's why I think you can't expect necessarily for your libido to match your partner's libido at any given time, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, I also think that's why romance is important. And that's what you're talking about is, is romance and sex don't have to be the, the same. Right, right. And also, you know, yeah, just basically, how are you loving each other in general? And in terms of, you know, we've talked about the love languages before, are, are we attending to each other in the ways that we want to be loved, not just physically, because that's just one of the love languages, but in other ways, are we appreciating each other? Are we noticing things? Are, are we listening when the person's struggling? You know, different things around that. And it, it kind of, um, it can be just sort of a, like a project to look at together. And sometimes it's really like, like art, when you talked about the libido conversation to have, it's like, what would be an ideal experience that would be meaningful to you? And it's like, well, I wanna have plenty of time to be together. I don't wanna be tired. I don't wanna, you know, it's not like, you know, not late right before bed. I want to have some little more leisure to do it. I want to feel good about my body. It's like, oh, well, you don't feel good about your body. Let's, what would help you feel better? I think you're beautiful, you know, reassuring each other. So you really, it, it's it's kind of like being vulnerable with each other and what would really help you feel more connected to your own body and to each other so you can enjoy the, the delights of, you know, physical intimacy. Excellent. Excellent, excellent advice. Well, uh, I think, uh, Michelle, again, you're living up to uh, your uh, title as our love and relationship coach. And um, I'm sure that there are going to be some people who want to explore this further with you. And uh, I've indicated it uh, 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 on one of these slides where they can reach you, which is fine. So um, yeah. any last words about... Um, uh, people and is uh, let's call it what it is a very touchy subject that's not off the <laughs> yeah yeah I mean just to be gentle with yourself and your partner around this because I think you know it, it can really um kind of touch a nerve or you know maybe your ego gets involved like oh I don't want to talk about that or something but you know there are a lot of ways to you know I, I knew a couple who you know she would pleasure him with her hands and he would rub her feet they enjoyed that together. You know, they did not necessarily at the same time, but sometimes, you know, you can get, get, you know, creative. One, uh, one couple I know, you know, put loot, put some like coconut oil on her body and he would massage her with his penis and all around her body. And so it's like, it can be, you know, maybe that sounds a little whacked or maybe it sounds too tame. I don't know, but you know, there's ways to be, you know, intimate physically, sexually that, um, we can get creative about. And it sounds like fun too. Right. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like playing doctor, but you're, you're free to do whatever. 
with consent yeah. with your partner and, and playful and it can be it can be fun it can be um yeah well, well now playing that... doctor is a playing doctor is a subject for another video right <laughs> But playing doctor with and without coconut oil, I think that we should broaden it uh, so that uh, <laughs> the, both those people who do and do not like coconut. Uh, okay, yeah. Feel... And obviously it's not latex friendly, so there's that concern if you're, right. you know, using, <laughs> I was yeah, thinking, but otherwise... It... I was just thinking the same thing, but not having your courage. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> well, uh, I think um, this has been probably one of our most interesting conversations. Thank you again, Michelle. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.